Hi, so I'm going to demonstrate a couple of new features in the engraving tool. So let's get some engraving go in here. Uh, let's see. Let's move the mesh around a little bit so that it gets a little twisty just for kicks. All right, so now we have one group of lines in here. Uh, what's new in this giant panel, kind of messy panel over here is uh, you can have more than one type of line in your field. So I've just defined two extra groups. Uh, let's take this uh, little Buren thing and adjust these groups and see what we can do. So let's make group number two be sort of at an angle and group number three be sort of at the opposite angle. So now we have a crisscrossing mesh of lines. Uh, this list lets you turn on and off the visibility of those groups. You can also change the color if you want. Um, these things here, uh, if we use the width tool, uh, all of these things are the different uh, modes for the engraver tool, by the way, and this one happens to be the width tool. Right now, if I just uh, use that tool, it only affects the current group. Uh, well, what if we want to affect all of them all at once? Then what we have to do is make sure these are green. Uh, the current group is affected regardless of whether it's green or red. So now it's affecting all of those lines regardless of the group because they're all green. All right, so now once we have a, a sort of a gradient field, what can we do with that now? Um, well, what we can do is all sorts of things with dashes down here. So let's minimize this tracing thing. Uh, all these different dash settings now. Um, so let's see, there's a, there's a zero threshold, for instance. Uh, actually, let's do it on the first group and make the other ones invisible just to see what's going on here. So this bottom little triangle thing, uh, any width below that value turns off the line completely. Uh, this top one is the measure for where you start to dash lines, so anything below that value is going to be dashed. Now you see these dashes here, oops, they're kind of, they're very uniformly spaced. You can change that with this random variable uh, and slide the amount of randomness off of the, the regular spacing. Uh, let's see, and if we zoom in, you see these dashes here, they're broken, but they're thick here and they're really thin here. Uh, and if, we, if you reduce it even further, uh, it gets really, really thin. So sometimes that's not what you want. You want to have a certain minimum thickness. In that case, you can increase the taper uh, to whatever is appropriate. Um, you can also change the density of the lines so that each uh, sort of dashed area has a minimum density to it. Then the last thing here is the length of the dash, the average length of the dash. So right now, uh, this on then off portion, that's the whole length. So if you increase that, you can kind of stretch things out or make things really skinny and then go back and tinker with the other random settings. And it'll randomize things in kind of a hopefully pleasing manner. Now, right now, this dash setting is only for that one group. These other lines are still solid lines. Um, if that's not what you want, what you can do is uh, share them. So select the second group. Then right now it's not shared. You click on that, it gives you a list of the other ones. So use from group one. And let's do the same for group three. Use from that. Now if you click on that, it shows which other ones share that current dash setting. All right, so let's see, we might have to trigger a remap of the, there we go. Got it. Yeah, sometimes the, the, the dirtiness, I guess you could say, uh, whether it's supposed to be updated or not, you gotta kind of force it sometimes. All right, so now each of those is, has those same dash patterns. Actually, I would say that's kind of a bug. It should be updating all of the groups right now. Even though the dash is setting, uh, it's not updating. Anyway, 
So moving on, that's how that's the kind of an overview of the dash setting. This direction thing and the spacing uh, don't really do anything at the moment. Uh, probably in the next release, these will be much more thoroughly implemented. Um, it has to do with growing lines. Like these lines currently are all kind of static. Uh, they're all uh, very evenly spaced, even if you manipulate the mesh. But ultimately, once you manipulate the mesh, you would you don't want these to bunch up. So the direction will be able to define how the lines are supposed to be directed, but it will prevent bunching up. But that's not quite implemented. So what else is implemented here? Uh, well, tracing is still. Uh, so let's add a let's add a sample image here. Let's do this one. Then go to the tracing mode. So now, if I click this big circle here, now things are going to be traced. Let's move this thing down so that you get more of a line variation in there. Let's turn the dashes down a bit too. Maybe have no dashes, but some. Turn up the zero a little bit. All right, so now. Uh, and these tracing is it's not shared currently so let's use the same as group 3 for the moment okay so right now they're all tracing using that one but let's say you want the you only want the horizontal ones to be uh, to be um, in the sky where it's light so here uh, you'd select new for group two, and then from here you can reduce this and change it to be something other than what it is. Can pump up the zero threshold, so get rid of it. Oops. For that, I would have to make a new dash area there. Let's make a new one of those. All right, so now the slanting upward is a little bit dark there, but it does not extend into the sky. That's currently shared with group one. Let's make it from group two. All right, so now we have a two groups using different sets of lines, and then you can move that around. All right, so the final feature that's that's kind of interesting is, uh, like right now, you have this mesh, so you can, you can manipulate the mesh, and it'll update as you manipulate little control handles on the mesh, but you can also base it on a path. So let's see if we turn off these, what it look like? Uh, you can manipulate these kind of width handles to generate a profile for your lines. So now if the groups are back on, let's just see one just to see what happens. Now it's very easy to change that mesh profile uh, just by manipulating these uh, things that are basically what the new Inkscape power stroke is doing. Oops. Uh, can add more points. It's very easy to accidentally make points with my current path implementation unless you get right on the point. Anyway, so that's a brief overview of what's been going on in Laidout. I hope you hope you liked it. I hope to hear from you soon, I guess. Thanks.